Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation's Battling and Beating Cancer show here on Can TV 21. Our program is all about battling and beating cancer and the steps that you can take to battle this disease. Our focus as the Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation, of course, is on blood cancer, myeloma, leukemia, and lymphoma. And you can call us at 312 Seven three eight ten sixty, and ask some questions later on of Dr. Gordon, who's going to be our special guest. And given that uh, every one out of two men in America and more than one out of three women in America will have cancer at some point in their life, you have to be a healthy hermit, really, to never be impacted by cancer. But the point is not to scare you about cancer. The point is to survive the disease. That's what this show is all about. And I'd like to introduce uh, the co-founder of the Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation and our co-host Charlene McMahon Seaman, and welcome her to our program today. Thank you, Scott. I'm glad to be here. And just a quick word or two about Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation. We are a nonprofit organization. We refuse to make a penny off of cancer, and we're all about curing lymphoma, leukemia, and myeloma. Uh, by raising uh, funding for research, by raising and promoting public awareness and education about blood cancer. And uh, the thing about cancer is if you want to be on the surviving side of the statistics, when you get that diagnosis of being uh, somebody with cancer, you have to take an active role. And there's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, one, of course, is to get a prompt and proper diagnosis. And sometimes that means following your own intuition because you are the one that knows how you feel. And we know a lot of patients who have gone to a doctor, maybe didn't get the diagnosis, but persisted and ultimately found out uh, that they had cancer. Uh, the other thing that you need to do is get a second opinion because if you're going to have your house painted or you're going to have your engine worked on your, on your car, you don't hesitate to get two mechanics or two painters to bid on the deal. When you're talking about your health, get a second opinion. It's very important. Uh, and get the best doctors that you can get. It really makes a difference. And we promised you the best of the best, and we're going to deliver on that promise tonight with Dr. Leo Gordon, who is one of the top oncologists, hematologists in the country. And he's the director of the lymphoma program uh, at the Robert H. Lurie Comprehensive Cancer Center of Northwestern University. And Charlene and Dr. Gordon are going to talk and take your calls, so get online to ask a question of Dr. Gordon. Uh, get the best possible treatments, and we're going to talk about some lymphoma treatments today. Uh, and surround yourself with people who care about you and people who will look out for you because you really need a strong advocate. In my case, it was Charlene, uh, but you really need to have somebody who's going to be part of your team looking out for you, uh, helping you decipher all of the information that you're going to be receiving and make the best possible decisions that you can make uh, and be active and involved in your treatment. Uh, you have to reach out to organizations like the Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation and adopt a cancer warrior mentality, a strong will to live, and the notion that you don't just become a cancer patient, you go on with your life, but there's a lot of things that you need to do to be active in your care and treatment, and uh, it's very important. So uh, today's subject is lymphoma, and very briefly, lymphoma is the most common blood cancer. About 500,000 Americans are battling lymphoma, and lymphoma kills about, about 20,000 Americans every year. It's a very common cancer in children, and while many forms of cancer are going down, the rates of non-Hodgkin lymphoma actually have nearly doubled since the 1970s. So uh, Charlene and Dr. Gordon are going to be talking about lymphoma Get on the phone at 738-1060 uh, uh, to ask your questions of Dr. Gordon. And we want to talk just very briefly about what the Chicago Blood Cancer Foundation and the people in Chicago are doing to fight back. And again, the importance of raising money and awareness for research. And you can join us on Sunday, September 12th for our Out for Blood bike ride. Uh, and every single dollar that people raise as part of that bike ride will go to cancer research. Uh, and the other important thing to remember is if you're not a bike rider or you're not going to be here, it's no excuse because you can set up a virtual team online and raise money, participate uh, in what is really going to be a great event for blood cancer research. So it's time for me to turn things over to Charlene and our special guest, Dr. Leo Gordon. 
Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to um, briefly introduce uh, Dr. Gordon. Yes, uh, Dr. Leo Gordon. Uh, he's from uh, Northwestern University uh, Medical Center, and I wanted to talk to him tonight about lymphoma. And uh, welcome to Thank our show. Our, Pleasure uh, to be here. Battling and Beating Cancer, a Chicago Blood Cancer Organization. Uh, I wanted to start out uh, with uh, introducing Dr. Gordon a little. And as mentioned, he's the director of the lymphoma uh, program at Rush, uh, Robert, I'm sorry, Robert H. Lurie, uh, 30 years uh, plus of experience, researcher, clinician, professor, one of the top hematologists, oncologists in the country. Wonderful man, as well as doctor, our friend, and welcome to Battling Beating Cancer. Thank you very much. And tonight we are going to discuss lymphoma. So I'd like to start out with just some basic questions for our viewers. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is lim the lymph system? Uh, basically, we can start there. Right. So the, the lymph system is part of the body's natural defense system. It's made up of um, lymph nodes throughout the, throughout the body and also lymphocytes, which circulate in the bloodstream. Uh, also, an integral part of the lymph system is the bone marrow, the spleen, and the liver. And all of those are part of a lymphatic system or lymph system, which its main function is to help fight infection, help, help defense. But when that goes awry, and the reasons for that going awry are many, uh, you can develop lymphoma. So it can occur in any one of those, uh, those areas. Okay. And if you can tell us a little about what, what is lymphoma? So it's, it's mostly, I would think of it as abnormal growth of the mm -hmm. cells that compose the lymph system. So primarily those are lymphocytes. Um, and uh, as they sit in the, in the organ, say on the lymph nodes, you get uh, uncontrolled growth of those lymphocytes. You get enlargement of the lymph nodes. So for the most part, when patients uh, have a diagnosis of lymphoma, the diagnosis is made by finding in large lymph nodes. And practically that means a lump, usually in the neck or under the arms or in the groin. Uh, it may also show up as a, uh, an enlargement or a mass behind the sternum, behind the breastbone. So if you patients sometimes show up with a, uh, a chest x-ray done for other reasons and an enlargement is found uh, behind the breastbone and the evaluation then reveals that there's a lymphoma. Okay, and there, I know there are various types and subtypes, uh, maybe you can discuss some of those. Right, so there are, first of all, there are probably anywhere from 60 to maybe 65,000 new cases of what we call non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in the U.S. per year, and about maybe 8,000 cases of Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, in the U.S. per year. And we used to think of them as very, very different. Um, but now as we're beginning to understand them better, we're actually learning that there's a little bit more similarity between those two than there are differences. Non-Hodgkin's lymphomas tend to occur in people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, but you also have people in their 20s and 30s. <clears throat> Hodgkin's lymphoma tends to occur in people mostly in their 20s and 30s, and more rarely in 50s, 60s, and 70s age groups. Uh, so within the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, there are probably 30, at least 30 different types. Uh, about maybe 95% of patients with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma have what we call B-cell lymphoma, and maybe 4% have T-cell lymphoma, and then maybe in 1% we can't tell. We can't really be sure. Uh, so the most common type is B-cell lymphoma, then T-cell lymphoma, and then uncertain. And for practical purposes, however, uh, we can subdivide those 30 types into two major types, those with aggressive lymphoma and those with non-aggressive or indolent lymphoma. And the natural history of those disorders is very different. And the natural history is what drives our treatment approach. Uh, so patients with aggressive lymphoma need treatment immediately um, and uh, very often a fairly intense course of chemotherapy. Uh, those patients with indolent lymphomas or non-aggressive lymphomas may actually be observed for sometimes many years before they're treated. Mm -hmm. uh, and so patients with the indolent type lymphomas 
uh, although they may have a diagnosis of lymphoma, which is in fact a blood cancer, very often they'll hear a recommendation from their uh, oncologist uh, to observe and not to do treatment. And that's not necessarily at all a bad thing. That mm -hmm. may, we have many patients that can be observed for many years. While those with the aggressive lymphomas, uh, the recommendation will often be treatment early on and, and fairly quickly. Yeah, and I, I know because we we deal with a lot of um, uh, patients who have blood cancer, and there's sometimes there's symptoms, sometimes there isn't symptoms and signs of it. Uh, what would you say the most? Um, I, I guess the best way to put it: what signs would people be looking for in symptoms? Well, as you said, very often there are none, especially with the indolent lymphomas. But if there are symptoms, the things to look for. First of all, the development of a, of a lymph node somewhere or a mass, that's more of a sign that you look for. Uh, that may be associated with a variety of symptoms, such as fever, uh, night sweats, uh, loss of weight, general malaise, not, uh, not feeling well, loss of appetite. So a, a general illness, which is very nonspecific and a little bit sneaky because it can kind of come up on you over pretty rapidly over a period of time and you're not thinking that there's anything anything specifically wrong it may mimic other illnesses uh, and so uh, but but those are the kinds of things that we look for anything that persists fevers that persist weight loss that you can't explain uh, sweats that are severe cause you to change your night clothes um, those are the kinds of things that we look for and we realize that you know everybody will have an occasional fever and everybody will have an occasional sweat uh, so I don't want anybody thinking that uh, that is a sign of right, that involvement. Right, right. And again, because it could be a flu, it could be a cold or something, but it's right. something that's persistent and keeps coming back Correct. or is, is more than just the normal. Right, um, exactly. And 